In this video, we're going to be talking about urinary incontinence, which is a subject often people are embarrassed to talk about, so don't talk about it enough, even though it affects millions of people in the UK, so we should be more able to freely talk about it. We know that the most common types of incontinence we talk about are stress incontinence and urge incontinence. So stress incontinence is made worse when there's a downward pressure. So this is, for example, running, jumping, coughing, sneezing, and it can just be a small dribble or it can actually be quite a large amount. So it can be really quite embarrassing. And the risk factors for stress incontinence include age is the biggest one. Not much we can do about that. Um, having had a vaginal delivery, again, not much we can do about that. Um, carrying too much weight, being constipated, um, being a smoker having a family history of stress incontinence and lacking estrogen, such as after the menopause. Urge incontinence, on the other hand, is often linked to symptoms of an overactive bladder. So the bladder is a big muscle and in urge incontinence, it just suddenly contracts, giving you the desire to suddenly urinate and you can't have control over it and sometimes you don't get to the toilet in time. So management of urinary incontinence. Well, for anyone who's suffering with urinary incontinence, there are some lifestyle changes you can make to try and improve things. So first things first, try and cut down on caffeine and alcohol and smoking. Try and maintain a healthy weight and avoid constipation. So lots of fiber, exercise uh, and water. Um, other things you can do include pelvic floor training if you've got stress incontinence. So this is the most important thing. I always recommend to patients an NHS app called Squeezy. This tells you how to do the pelvic floor exercises and reminds you to do them. Because however much we try, it's difficult to remember, isn't it? So you should be doing it two to three times a day and hopefully after about eight to 12 weeks, if you stick with it, then you will notice a bit of a difference. So you've got to do both um, fast pelvic floor exercises and slow ones because there's different nerve fibers that work differently. Um, so I'd say stick at it, try and make sure you're doing it every day and realistically, as women who have had vaginal deliveries are probably going to have to do it forever to even avoid this incontinence. If that's not working and not enough, then there are continence clinics which are often run by women's health physios and they can help you with these pelvic floor exercises and improve it even more. The benefits of the pelvic floor exercises go beyond just the urinary incontinence. Uh, they can also help with prolapse and they can improve sex. So definitely worth doing. For urge incontinence, the treatment is a little bit different. The main thing is retraining your bladder. So avoiding the kind of, I'll just take a trip to the toilet now whilst I'm here. What you actually want to do is spread out the time between urinating so that the bladder can rebuild itself. Um, I'm going to include a link in the description for a good detailed example of how you might be able to start doing this bladder retraining. If that doesn't work, then there are medications that you can get from your GP which help relax the bladder muscle. For both types of incontinence, there are surgical options, but obviously these are very much kind of the last thing to try if all the other things we've mentioned have failed. So there's lots of ways we can manage urinary incontinence and you don't have to suffer in silence and just be buying pads and worrying that you're the only one who this is happening to. It's really common and there are things you can do to help. So please do reach out and get help and do try and these simple things as well at home by yourself. Hope that all helps. Thanks so much. See you on my next video.